Hello, brothers and sisters. So let's talk Israel again for a second and let's just set the, the tone and the atmosphere they're living with at the moment. So the first story we have here is Israel's Foreign Minister Cohen says peace with Saudi is within reach. More countries will come. I estimate that the normalization agreement with Saudi Arabia will be joined by additional Muslim countries. This is according to the Israeli Foreign Minister. Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen estimated more countries would normalize relations with Israel following the agreement with Saudi that was within reach. I estimate that that will be joined by the additional countries, mainly Sunni in Africa and Asia, with the exception of the extreme countries, places like Iran. Cohen was seen meeting with foreign ministers from Greece, Sweden, Malta, Bulgaria, and the Czech Republic, as well as more scheduled for the rest of his trip. Now, what's interesting for me here, and I'm going to touch on that just quickly because people keep forgetting about the historic thing that this is. Israel, South Africans will understand this the best quickly, is as big as the Kruger National Park. It's tiny in the grand scheme of things. I did the short where I showed you my world map and how small it really is. And here we are at the cusp of the global climate crisis hoax that they're driving on everyone and the whole world is falling apart. Everything is being destroyed. Massive storms, wars, rumors of wars, Ukraine, Russia, Iran, China, Taiwan, chaos everywhere. But the entire world agrees on one thing. We need to focus on Israel. Israel. That's like saying there's a 20 car pileup on the left hand side of your house. But we should really, really focus on the glass of water in the backyard. Because it's an important glass of water. That tells you this is all straight out of the Bible. This all proves that the enemy's focus is on what belongs to God. And he needs to wipe Israel out before the end of time because then he can make everything null and void and he won't get that right so again the entire world right now in the midst of all their so-called crises and stress points and everything that they've got the talking heads talking about israel stays top of the charts and the aggression and the hatred towards israel and the jews and the christians by definition with them is rising by the hour not even by the day anymore. And that's the climate. And in that climate, they've got to push for peace. And all the countries are queuing to have their five-minute conversation with Israel. Next one. Israel's Netanyahu to meet with Biden in New York. Location is seen as a sign of U.S. displeasure. They're not meeting at the White House. They're meeting on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly as a sign of displeasure towards Netanyahu being in power and not one of his cronies from the left that he would have preferred be in power. So really, who gives a... a, a really, why bother? We, we really don't stress about what Biden thinks about anything. America is not even impressed with Biden. So why, why do you think your show of displeasure and moving this to the sidelines of the UN General Assembly is going to freak Israel out and be a slap in their face? It is a public show to the enemies, though, that Israel and the U.S. are not sitting together anymore or having each other's backs in that sense. Netanyahu had been a frequent visitor to the White House over the years, and Israeli leaders are typically invited within weeks of taking office. Meeting at the White House symbolizes close relations and friendship and honor. And the denial of that shows exactly the opposite, said Aitan Gilboa, an expert on U.S.-Israeli relations. This is not going to be a pleasant meeting, Gilboa said. It's going to be a sour meeting. The White House was tight-lipped ahead of the meeting on Wednesday, declining to offer any details on the agenda, although we can guess. Biden administration officials have repeatedly raised concerns about Netanyahu's contentious plan to overall Israel's judicial system, and that is one of the main topics to come up. Again, what right have you to meddle in Israel stuff when you can't even run your own country in America properly, and you're doing a really good job of destroying it? The White House said Wednesday's talks would focus on shared democratic values, 
There's not much of that left with the way America's gone. Um, for a more stable and prosperous integrated region. New world order, one world, everybody working together. The meeting comes at a time of cooling ties between Israel and the Democratic Party. Biden administration officials downplayed that the meeting is being held on the sidelines of New York and not Washington. Netanyahu expected to eventually get a White House invitation, though timing of such a visit would depend on how Wednesday's meeting goes. Topping Netanyahu's wish list will be discussions on U.S. efforts to broker the deal establishing full diplomatic, diplomatic relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now that whole conversation brings up the whole dividing God's land issue, which is what America is pushing for really, really hard, and the creation of a Palestinian state. That's all part of this discussion process. And I think Netanyahu will probably bite if he gets what the, the crown prince was speaking about in his pre-meetings, that Israel controls the Temple Mount and looks after it as a place of worship for both and all three. And then they can build their temple possibly on the half that they wanted to do and control the other half for the Muslims. And everybody is supposedly happy. Now, if that is allowed and that is part of the deal, I can't see why he wouldn't sign. But by signing, he's going to cause major chaos because you shall not divide the Lord's land. So, tension with America and Israel, meetings on the sidelines. Um, Netanyahu is not going to take it lying down if he gets told what to do. And he usually has a very strong opinion on things. So, it'll be interesting to see in the news in the next few days how that went down today. And what the outcome of that is and what it led to. You know, I've got to think to myself, with the Antichrist being ready and in the shadows, I mean, even Prince Charles last year referring to him receiving trillions of dollars with which he'll fix everything, that person, that man, is Netanyahu going to meet with this person without even realizing it? This up-and-coming leader that no one's talking about that's in the shadows getting ready to step forward once we're removed and we're gone? It's an interesting thought. He could have met him already, probably has, probably is going to. So that's another thought. Um, if, if you were at the UN General Assembly right now, I am pretty certain that man is there. Then, the climate in Israel at the same time right now, while this whole summit is going down, police are urging gun owners to carry at synagogue as terror alerts have spiked in the high holidays. We've just had Yom Teruah, the blowing of the trumpets or the shouting day, and we're heading straight towards Day of Atonement with the 10 days of all worked into that. We've discussed that on my previous video about Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah. So look at that again if you missed it. And these high holidays leading all the way to Tabernacles um, is all building and they are threatening more than they've ever threatened before, which they always do. No Israeli has ever threatened, threatened, threatened. No Jews make public threats and call on all other Jews to get ready to attack the Muslims every time they have a feast. But the UN still picks their side every single time. But we won't go there. Police on Monday encouraged licensed gun owners to carry their weapons to synagogues over the holiday period. As the security establishment has registered a rise in terror alerts in the lead up to Yom Kippur. Police said in a statement there have been a 15% increase in terror warnings compared to the two months before the holidays and security forces were on heightened alert. Licensed gun owners were urged to carry during these times. The police statement said the number of alerts will rise further as we approach Yom Kippur which starts on Sunday evening for the Jews. Therefore we call on worshippers who have licensed guns to bring them to prayer. In addition, we call on the public in general to be aware and report every unusual incident in real time to the Police 100 hotline. So, again, coming back to America and other countries now again, where they have got an active campaign to get rid of people that have their own personal weapons and carry permits and things. They want to strip that away and take it away from you. Because then when there's terror and chaos from this migrant invasion and everything that's happening... You won't be able to defend yourself. At least in Israel, they can say, you know what, we trained you guys. 
you've got the right to carry weapons, please carry weapons. And don't feel that you shouldn't shoot anyone, it's going to be a lot of paperwork and chaos. If you need to defend your loved ones, shoot, and shoot to kill. Stop the threat to the civilians. They're using their population correctly and allowing them to protect themselves. When you're living in constant fear that even if you go to the grocery store, you can get rammed to death, attacked, murdered, shot with a machine gun. It is crazy. Then you totally understand when you can say, carry your gun and make sure that you're ready and call the police with anything that happens. And that's where they're at. That is a tense situation for Israel to be in. It is a tense time for them to live in. So pray for Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and just thank the Lord that we have Jesus Christ in our lives, and we're expecting to see Him again soon. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.